Well, I'm already a couple miles in time, you guys. And I was planning on going on that road right there. But the wind is blowing in my face. I knew it was coming from the north. And I always like to ride into the north. But, I mean, it's blowing a little harder than I thought. I put, uh, yeah, I jacked the tires up to 55 and we're hitting pavement. We're gonna follow the white line today. Um, I'm not usually one for the pavement, but as windy as it is and a chance of rain, and I wanna get the miles in, we're gonna ride some pavement today. organized here. This shoulder isn't going to last long. That's why I started the camera here. I'm a couple miles out of town. I want to get away from the wind as much as possible. But right up here this ends. If the sun comes out, it's going to be really, really warm. But there's still a chance of rain. <laughs> Again, it rained a little bit last night and most of the morning. But it stopped, just stopped dead. And now we got the wind pushing it out. Whew. But it's going to be in our face the whole ride north as soon as I turn this corner. It's going to be in our face. But, so even downhills aren't going to be real easy. resisting me the whole way that's for sure I should be able to not pedal and just coast this at about 20 miles an hour yet I'm in 14 pedaling resistance at about 11 miles an hour yeah crazy
may have a few run-ins with traffic. A, because we're on pavement, but B, because it's now after 11 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, and every road here leads to a church. This particular road will probably be the busiest, I had to guess. Well, no, the other road going the exact opposite on the other side, going south, that'll be the busiest of the highways we'll be on. This one will be second. And the one we're gonna take a left on up here in a few miles will be the easiest to ride as far as traffic wise. Luckily, there's nothing to hunt, nothing in season, plenty of fishing. So we may see a few trucks and trailers with boats on it. Whew. This wind is a workout. This is why I always start my ride into the wind. So if I wimp out and know I'm not going to be able to do it, I'll just turn around. I'll give it all I got for as long as I can and then just turn around just to get something out of it. Oh. I had a pretty good brunch, I guess you could say. Whew. All right, a little more downhill at least. Wow. The reason why I'm not going any further into the shoulder is I got rattle bumps inside them for the people I guess they fall asleep. And if you hit them on a bike, oh my God, it's like somebody's putting a jackhammer up your butt. Not fun. Whew. Uh, I had to show you. Here, listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Usually that's right on the white line. But it must have been a Monday morning when this guy laid the track. Oh, man. You can ride pretty nice if the wind's not blowing in your face. Luckily, I'm just below that tree line to the left of me. Oh. 
give me a break here. But you can see this is why I ride the white line even if it's on the inside because that shoulder disappears that quick. And most times it's okay to ride off into that, but a lot of times it's very loose. And if you're clipping along, you know, 10, 15 miles an hour, and you hit that loose stuff with firm wheels, it can throw them sideways on you. So even this, like this, even though it's got a little bit of a shoulder, I'll still ride right on the white line just because of those rattle bumps. And it keeps me close to the edge where I know it's gonna disappear anyway. It comes in handy sometimes to get off the road because oddly enough, most times when traffic goes by me, it's when I'm on this side of the line. But. They're going to usually weave around you wide enough where you stay on the white line. There's 10, 15 feet between you and the car. Here, in this state, in my area. I mean, this is Minnesota. The closer you get to the cities, the more people are used to people being everywhere and you just got to go where you got to go here you got a little more time to get around people they have the Amish for practice <laughs> so a bike rider is nothing you can zoom around us pretty easily we hold the straight line pretty well we only took up six square feet <sighs> Going up a hill with the wind in my face, gotta love it. Don't be surprised if my chain skips. I've been having problems with the derailleur. I played with it this morning, but I think I got it. I just need a new chain. But I want to bring the whole bike into the shop and get a few other things done too. So, I'll let them do it so I know it's done right, right from the get go. Oh, this is a hell of a hill. Woo! Holy cow. That's the price I pay for taking pavement, not dirt. The dirt ride north is not, nothing like this. Holy cow. This is slow, slow. Come on, Betsy. Oh yeah. This is how you burn off that lunch. Right here. Oh. Keep your knees in. Set your post for your seat high enough to get a good full stride oh. and just go oh my God. and eat lots of protein oh. and hopefully enough carbs Starting to see a horizon line. Oh. Holy cow. That was a long hill to be going up that wind. Oh. Wow. It's still not over. It's just not as hard. <laughs> oh, man.
I'm only going into the wind half the amount of miles per hour that the wind is blowing at me. Yeah. Ooh, coasting down a steep hill. Pretty much what we just rode up. Wow. Welcome to the country. But you know what? I lived in Nebraska for I don't know how many years. Not a long time, but a few years. And you talk about wind blowing. Oh my God. I don't care what time of day, what time of year. Yeah, it's blowing. And you better love the sight of corn. It's cornfields everywhere. But it has a lot of really cool bluffs that you can drive around and hike around in. I'll give it that. That's our turn. I am so glad we decided to come right into the wind this way first. We're probably still gonna have it in our face a little bit because it's coming from the north. We're going dead north. That's why we had it so hard. But being that we're going west, we're probably still gonna deal with it for a while until we go back south. As far as easy, but nothing's really easy in Minnesota. By the time we get over there and start going south, the wind can start blowing north. That's just the way it is here, especially in the winter. Oh. We are turning left, but I just wanna make sure I'm way off the road because I'm actually gonna stop before I take a turn and stand still. Lower the gear. Whew. I don't want to look both ways good here. Yeah. It's, this is almost like a highway junction. People do 65 here. So, good to be sure. This one has a little bit of a shoulder, but I don't think it's any better or longer than the other road. This one will just be a little less traffic. And it may not because of church Sunday and the time of day it is. There's just a lot fewer houses on this road. And that's the end. So you can see how the rattle bumps now are right next to the white line. And you don't want to be in those, oh my God. So we do still have a little bit of a headwind. Not near as bad. <clears throat> this part of the loop actually isn't really all that long. I think it's only like four miles, maybe. I'm one of those geeks that when I have downtime, you know, if it's dark or raining, 
or I just have the time period if I'm not working or whatever. I'm on backcountry or on X Hunt or Google Earth or something looking for different routes to ride and plotting them out and knowing the mileage ahead of time so I can uh, plot the ride of the day depending on the weather. Like today I, there's a chance of rain and it's windy as hell. So I knew my only chance was to ride straight into the wind. That way if it started to rain I could just turn around and use the wind to get back quicker. So it is a little strategic the way I ride, but not purposely. It's really because of the wind and the weather here. It's rare that we get flat, calm days. And those are the days you gotta worry about because what the hell's on the other side of that? You know, calm days here is very, very rare. There's too many big, big, giant lakes for us to have calm days, you know, with the Great Lakes right above us, especially me. I'm, holy crap, three hours, maybe, to, to the Great Lakes. So, so many farts up there, I can smell it down here. Yeah, it only takes six to eight hours to drive from border to border of Minnesota, north and south, you know, depending on what route you take and what time of day you do most of your driving and, you know, how many times you stop, you know, you can do it in a day. I live far enough north that when I go to the cities, you know, it's only three hours max, and that's with one stop, usually in the morning, to get enough stuff to get through the day to get there. You know, and then the same when we return. When I'm coming back, I'll get enough stuff for the whole ride. One stop. Easy for me. I'm a single driver. I don't have to stop and pee for a whole family that goes at different times. <laughs> but even still, you could do it in a day. There's a friendly farmer waving. Probably recognize the hat. I wear the same hat most of the time when I'm walking around the town and working. Summertime safari hat with the drawstring. Now I'm really, really glad we went head first into the wind start off. I, I started recording halfway through because I didn't want you guys to listen to all that wind for the entire ride. <coughs> and I have about at least three other videos with that section of the road in it anyway. So after a while it gets redundant to see the same portion of the road over and over in several videos. This road I've never been on. So what you're seeing right now at this time is the same time I'm seeing it on bike. several crossover roads, dirt roads that are crossover roads that we could take to go north or south, but yeah, we're going to follow the white line for pretty much the whole day today because A, I just got finished washing the whole bike and um, relubing the chain, and B, if it does start to rain, on top of the bike being clean, and I don't want mud up. Hey, you be nice. 
Yeah. Dogs love bikes. Usually all it takes is just a tone to go away and they're fine. That one happened to be caged in anyway. Um, oh yeah, the dirt roads are already muddy from it raining most of the night and all this morning. So I really just didn't want to go there. I saw how much crap I cleaned off this bike. Ugh, unbelievable. First thing I did was wash it down with a sopping wet washcloth from head to toe just to get the built up grime off of the frame in general. And then changed the water and did it all over again around the sprocket areas and, oh, gross. Years. I, th I bet it's been two years since this bike has been t cleaned. I know it has because it's been in a storage van for at least a year. And if I did ride it, I know I didn't clean it that whole year before that. It was pretty dirty. Shameful. And I will admit, it uh, sounds a whole lot better when I'm cranking. As all that hot, soapy water just flushed all that sand and stuff out of the bearings. Very, very smooth right now. Well, we're going to get some sunshine. That's nice. A little bit of sunshine. Right now, it's high 60s. I bet it might be even touching 70 right now. So, it's really, really nice. I got a sweatshirt on, and I'm comfortable with the breeze that I'm making and the breeze that it's blowing. Um, it's a little warm, but it's comfortable. But around here in Minnesota, or any, probably Wisconsin, anywhere, there's lake regions and water and general swamps, creeks. After rain, the mosquitoes just go bonkers on you. So it's good to have long sleeves as long as you can after a rain. Let the wind drive them all away. Put 55 pounds in the rear tire, well, both tires, and I probably could have went 50 when both went a little more softer. I went up to 50 knowing that I was going to be on roads, or forcing me to stay on roads for a smoother ride, but I think 50 would have been even nicer on these roads. Some of the frost team cracks are just big enough to drop the rear end in pretty hard. Boom! Whew. Luckily, we got a little bit of a crosswind helping us get up this. It's kind of nice.
is going to be a nice ride now. I'm about six and a half miles in. Well, I am. You're not. The video didn't start till about two and a half miles in. I already went two and a half miles, I should say. And then I started the video. <coughs> I just didn't want to show that road again, like I said before. It's been in so many videos. Honestly, I think I found my northbound route on windy days, you know, if I just want to get the miles and get a good workout because you can really focus on your stride, like keeping your knees in tight and holding good posture and put it, uh, gear it in whatever you want to fight the resistance as hard as you want it, you know. It's, kind of like spinning at the track, or I mean at the gym, but in real life, you know, really focus on your form, build the muscles that really push the pedals. My dad owned a bike shop, it was just a shop, he wasn't a pro biker or anything like that. You know, he could tune a bike at the at the time, you know, because the 70s and 80s bikes were a whole lot easier to do than what, what you got now. I mean, I can remember when 10 speeds went up to 12 and everybody was flipping out. <laughs> but now, you know, 21 speed mountain bikes alone, and everybody doesn't even want the more speeds anymore. But anyway, up something. Um, my dad all the time trying to t teach me to stop wandering my feet on the pedals so much keep them still find a position you like keep them still keep your knees one position all the time build those muscles and you'll be able to outrun out hike out ride all your friends you're all over the place you get sore quick because your feet are all over the place and then you don't want to ride anymore. And over the years of him hollering that at me, I just finally clicked to do it. And then I became a biker because then I realized what it took. Proper form. And you see it all the time. I mean, I've done it. Everybody does it. You get it too low a gear, so when you're paddling, you're actually, your butt actually comes up off the seat and you're almost hopping when you pedal. You know, that's way out of proper form. That's not even close to proper form. That's like a hop, skip, and jump thing for the Olympics or some shit, but that's not how you ride a bike. And like I said, we've all done it. You know, I'm a lot more in tune on not doing that anymore. I, you know, if I do it now, it's because I went from a higher gear and shifted down real quick to a lower gear because I'm exhausted and all of a sudden then I'm out of control and I'm bouncing everywhere. I gotta let my speed catch up to the gear. You know, but other than that, no, I don't ride. I'm not a hoppy rider. I stay tight and in a good form. The only thing moving is from my hips down and my neck because I'm moving my head and looking around so much, which is why I can't wear a helmet cam. You guys would think I was crazy how much I look around. But you see things on a bike that you don't see in a car. Even though I know these roads and I live in this area, close by this area, um, you just don't see things that you see on a bike.
coming up on our south turn. This one should push us right along. This is a pretty easy loop. I mean, we've only done, I don't know, seven and a half miles now. This is actually going a little quicker than I thought it would. But that's okay. That's because it's pavement. Um, you know what? Let's go down to one more. Yeah. No process. This uh, crosswind isn't so bad, so cross this highway and continue on to the next paved road south. I'm going to try to keep going. This road has traffic, but usually you can chance it, and I am. There's probably nothing five miles from either direction right there. And you can hit that where you'd have to sit there and wait ten minutes. It just depends. Now, because this road has a different route number, you won't have a shoulder. And this road should have less traffic than one we were just on, so. Clouds have been moving in this whole time I've been gabbing. I've been watching. But truthfully, I really don't mind if it rains. The roads are pretty clean. There's not that much sand left on them anymore from winter. The wind and the rain has pretty much washed these roads off, so. As long as I stay off the dirt roads, I think we'll be okay. Oh, somebody lost a tire there. I almost put my street tires on. I got some decent street tires that are like a aqua tread looking thing for cars and I like how quiet they are on roads and they're a little narrower they're a 1.9 instead of a 2.10 so I get a little less, a little less wind resistance very smooth ride Honestly, what stopped me from doing it was, well, two things. A, I was busy cleaning up the house a little bit and the bike. But if it did start to rain real hard, there wouldn't have been no choice but to take the quick, quickest route home. And that could have very well been a dirt road and those tires would have been stupid on a dirt road. So, playing the cards that it's not going to rain but if it does I'm prepared <laughs> I hope I'm actually more prepared than that because I have my rain gear and the bag on my rear rack So, I just wanted to ride. The weather didn't really bug me. I knew I was going one way or the other. 
I got about a four hour window before the next one moves in and I went for it. Whew. And so far it's been an awesome ride. Whew. A little bit of headwind on that one. Just as I'm coming up over the horizon here. Yike. We're going to be glad we went this extra down to the next left. This is actually really nice scenery out through this way. Might even see some wildlife because I had to hunker down a little bit last night because of the rain. We actually had thunder and lightning. I almost got caught in it riding last night. But I turned and avoided it just so I could make a loop. Ended up getting, I think, Shoot, I can't remember now. 13 miles, maybe? Something like that. But if I rode what I really wanted to ride, it would have been closer to 30. Ooh. Sometimes I gotta let go of the wheel and shake my hands a little bit. I did buy a new seat this year. I like it. Um, I'm used to it already, I'll give it that. You know, it usually it takes a little while. Well, I can't say I'm fully used to it, but at least now I can ride a little longer than you know, 10, 15 miles. I know comfortably I'll be able to do a 25 mile day now for sure. I was worried that, you know, because at first doing five miles, I was like, holy crap, yeah, I'm sore as hell already. Ooh, I didn't like the sound of that. I just ran over something. It's the problem with jacking your tires up with more air pressure is they're a lot more vulnerable for anything pokey. So anyway, the seat is a little bit wider, so it gets it off the bone more. You, know, you, don't, you don't feel it so much on the bone right next to your butthole as much. You do out a little bit wider now, where your more fatty ass tissue is. And that took a little bit for me to get used to. I'm not used to having something sore right there. But, once I got a numb plate going, now it's pretty comfortable. I think I got the tilt set a little bit too back. I got the right degree pitch for the bike, I know that, because it sits really nice. But I'm getting a little too much tickle on the testicles, if you know what I mean. I could tilt it down just a little bit more. seat post that's what I really need because I don't have uh, rear suspension on my bike which I prefer if I was doing a lot more trails and downhill riding oh hell yeah 
full suspension all the way. But I'm more cross country tour. So this is what I want to do. I have ridden bolt suspension. And unless it's a lockout, which I would do, I'd go full suspension with a lockout, because then you have an option. But that usually considers more money, you know, usually, particularly a lot more <laughs> for a good system that you can trust. But um, I found that when I rode full suspension, I have such a power stroke you know I have a high not a high seat but a full stroke seat setting and full suspension I get to I'll get a bounce and I didn't really like that that whoa 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 feeling as you were pedaling you know being a hardtail so rigid you don't get that so you can really get some power in your strokes slight little hesitation when your other leg is coming up and over that release of your other leg going down is so minimal but it's just enough where you get the bounces going and yeah I didn't like full suspension because of that alone and I just don't ride anywhere where it would benefit me to own one or I can't say own one to buy one if I had my way, I'd have a bike for every situation, like most people. That's, that's what everybody wants. That'd be awesome. If I was gonna go anything carbon fiber, it would be road bike for sure. I don't think I'd even go cross country carbon fiber just because I'd be afraid of it I like aluminum just because you can be a little more rugged you get a, you get a, you can try things you can try going down that rocky trail you know and have a little more confidence than you would with a $2,000 carbon frame sitting under your ass you know just a frame alone for me anyway it's just a confidence thing it would control me. Being a kid here doing some weaving and a little slalom, imaginary slalom. <laughs> this is how you end up off the road wiping your teeth out of your face by being an idiot. This is 61 we're coming up on. It's not a busy road, but like all the others, you could hit it. We'd have to stop here for 10 minutes. All right, here we go. Now the wind should be behind us most of the way. Oh, rattle bumps. Well, just about 10 miles to that turn. 9.9 .9 miles. And on a tenth of a mile on a bike takes forever. So down the road here will be 10. <clears throat> oh. Well, now I kind of missed the wind because I'm all sweaty. Whew. But it's okay. gone so far, or I've gone, you've gone eight, and if you're still with me, 
that's awesome because it's a nice day out here might as well have somebody come along with me I'm in no hurry I'm still in low gear I'm relaxing We got a set of railroad tracks coming up here. That's why I'm still in low gear. We might as well wait and we'll kick it in a little bit once we get up here and let our butt cool off a little bit. I should have just took a chance and left earlier when the roads were just a little bit wet. That would have been a nicer view. And it would have better been a better chance of deer in all these fields. Yeah, it's pretty warm without the wind blowing on our face now. Holy cow. What a difference. Railroad tracks around here, there's, you just got to go at them. Oh, oh, oh. They're rough, no matter how you try to cross them. You know, back home, there's always that one spot where nobody ever drove that was still level. Nope, not here. This part of the loop isn't really all that long either. It's I'm no more than five miles to the next turn. So if I remember right, the whole loop is less than 20. I, I think it's like 16. Because at one point I remember calling it the 16, loop 16, because it you ended on a route 16 and it was 16 miles long so it was called a loop 16 you can start or finish on route 16 and it's a 16 mile loop but we added on a little bit at the very beginning so it might be a little longer where I turned on the camera Instead of going straight up that dirt road, we took the pavement, which winds around a little further, adds on a few more miles. This is a gradual incline right here. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but because we have a little bit of a back breeze, it's just a comfortable stride right now. Just perfect.
I remember when I got fitted to this bike. This is a medium frame bike, by the way. And it has a 5.6 to 5.10 rider height at a medium size frame. But <laughs> he measured me and I was just touching 5.11. And the first thing he says is, how long have you been 5'11"? I was like, you know what, man? I've been so bummed about that. My freshman year of high school, I shot up to 5'11", thinking, hell yeah, I'll be six foot by the time I'm out of high school. I never grew an inch in sense. So he put me on a medium, knowing I was going to shrink. <laughs> and this bike has fit me perfect ever since. Thank you, Giant. But it does, it fits me really well. I still got a lot of height left on my seat post, so it's not like I'm way up trying to stretch to ride it. Very comfortable. I put on um, flat bars, I took the regular mountain bars, mountain bike bars off that come usually on most mountain bikes that you buy for family recreation. Took that crap right off and put on a nice set of flat bars with a, well, they're not straight flat, but they're flat. Um, they got a slight tilt back right where the grips are. Not much, 10, 15 degrees off center line. But between that, you know, having the wider grip, flat bar, palm style grips, and stubby bar ends. I don't have the real tall ones like you see the kids put on their mountain bikes because they think they're cool. I got the little stubbies. And you can put your palm <coughs> on the palm grips and your fingers just kind of curl over the little stubbies and it's a perfect setting for your hands. You know, you've been riding bikes your whole life. As a little kid, you start riding bikes, you know, just to get around, you know, to see your friends, ride across town to the bowling alley, whatever, you know, just to get places, you had to ride a bike. But you never really, well, maybe some people did, I can't say you never really, but some people, myself included never really enjoyed riding a bike until I got a bike that was made for riding actual riding a distance like this one for one I've had others but like this one you know it's set up to ride and to be on it and to ride a while and then I really started enjoying riding actual riding a bicycle you know even as kids you did you know you got your little rat pack you hang out and you ride around town and stuff that was fun I, I like doing that but that was a different kind of riding I'm talking about riding that makes memories you know every road now that I ride is documented you know in my mind, in video, electronically, I'm just more into it. And I didn't do any of that growing up. Even, like I said, my dad owned a bike shop, but he was just a repair guy, so don't get me wrong. Like I said, he wasn't a pro athlete in any way. But you would think even at that point, you know, having all the bikes around that he fixed and you know, he bought and sold bikes. He had a, you know, 
you could go, you, he sold the same bikes that you could buy at Walmart at that point, but there was no Walmart at that point. <laughs> but same kind of bikes. Yeah, like your $70 bikes back then, which are $200 now. But I just wasn't into it until I really got a bike that was made for riding, long distance riding or made to be able to ride a long time, whether that be a long time during the day or a long time in years to come. This was brought up on YouTube on the channel that I watched. Someone sent the guy a channel or a question. What bike got you into riding? And just that question alone, I was thinking, oh man, I remember when I had my you know, wide slick orange peel back in you know the late 70s and, or the early 70s. And I remember when I had my Stingray and I remember when I had my first 10 speed. But you know what? I don't remember ever riding them anywhere other than just around the neighborhood. I didn't go anywhere. You know, I didn't pack it up in a vehicle and go to a state park and go ride trails. I didn't do any of that. Could have. Those places and things were available. It was just because those bikes weren't made or designed to do what I'm doing now. Interesting kind of brings me into a different subject. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day about bikes, about mountain bikes. I said, well, you can't really say mountain bike anymore. It's too vague. There's, you know, a half a dozen styles of mountain bikes now. You know, when this mountain bike term came out, um, it was basically almost a 10-speed bicycle that they put wider forks on on the front, put some beefier tires on and some normal granny style handlebars and took them off road. You know, then they started developing things that were a little beefier, but basically mountain bikes have been around for a long time because people themselves invented them. Just that manufacturers caught on and started building them for them so you could just flat out buy it like the one that I'm on. This is something that someone can build other than the front suspension. You know, every other component on this you could put on any bike hard frame and it becomes a mountain bike. So that's why the term mountain bike is so vague because you have downhill mountain bike, cross country, uh, enduro, I mean, there's just so many, you know, and there's probably more than I even know. But you know, touring, there's people that tour, have bags all over it. It's still, you can still use a mountain bike for that. There's just different styles and different forms of them nowadays where back in the day there was one. You can either ride a 10 speed or a mountain bike. Oh, that feels good. These are big knobs too. There's not a lot of space between each knob and the, you know, so it's an actual smooth ride for knobbies. They're enduro tires. They're, uh, whoa. They're really good for loose gravel and sand. That's why I got them on. But I just let that ride out. I wasn't gonna go cranking up the hill to keep that speed going. But they got a decent center line that's why I got them. 
They were cheap. I think I got both of them for less than $40. They're made by Bell. But they've lasted me forever. I think I'm out, I've had them on here for three years now. But I got uh, three more sets of tires in my saved shopping cart list on Amazon. So when I get to that portion of buying for this bike, I got three sets ready to go. A new set of street, a new set of off-road, and a new set of enduro. probably start with the enduro which is basically a newer set of what these are but a little bit bigger in the lug even less um, groove space between them Here's a tip for you if you're new at buying tires for mountain bikes. If you spend a, a lot of time going straight on smooth surfaces, it doesn't have to be pavement, just smooth, even smooth dirt roads even. Um, and you ride in, you know, lug tires where the lugs are far apart and that <laughs> and you don't like that feel of clunk, 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 clunk. Tires are designed to have a center line, so when you're going straight down the road, the very center of the tire is usually a harder compound, and the space between the lugs is very minimal, so it doesn't make a sound going down the road. So when you're buying tires, if you ride a lot of hard pack surface and you don't like that sound, that gap sound, you know, of the, in between the lugs as you're going down the road, especially the feel, you feel it more than you hear it. Because the lugs, the lugs in the tires, and you know, and the front and the back tire are never in sync, which would almost be worse. <laughs> like a horse galloping. But um, if you don't like that, then you need to buy tires that has a hard compound center line. So you don't have any space between each lug. Picture yourself riding a dirt bike on pavement as compared to riding a street bike. That's the same feeling you get with a hard center line on lug tires. You get the feeling of a street bike, but the traction of a dirt bike just off to the side of the center line. Whew. Most Walmart bikes come with a hard compound center line. Just for that reason, because most people ride them on the street and they'll never buy another bike again if they got that that, 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 that feeling. Oh, I hate that bike. I hate riding it. It's so annoying. So they do that purposely. So when they're riding down the road to their buddy's house and their buddy says, wow, that's a cool bike, where'd you get it? Ma, look what Peter got. <laughs> Sold. Manipulation. But it is convenient, I will say. I have a hard tread center line. <laughs> it's easier to pedal. It's easier to coast. And in a way, teaches you how to ride 
the proper posture because you want to stay on that center line all the time because it's the smoothest ride. Whew. That was a little bit of a hill. Wow. This will take us to our next turn. It's a little brighter out. down this highway is a 60 mile an hour highway but people do 70 because it does have a wide shoulder to ride on and they get the feeling of a super highway here I particularly like it because of the wide shoulder but yeah it just gives people you know, the highway, highway feel, the freeway feel. The road is so wide. Okay, now we're gonna have a little bit of a cross headwind. But it still should be okay. This hill right here is about the only hill we have to deal with. And at that, this point, we're at 14 miles from where I started. It's been a very casual ride, very comfortable ride. And if you're still with me after the last turn, hooray, that's awesome. You must be a biking fool. Or you like that country Minnesota, because it sure as hell can't be my rambling. <laughs> Ooh, definitely a good day for working on form. Just keep it in an easy gear to keep the burn going. And practice your strokes. 
Really get those muscles across the top of the knee warmed up. Really stretch out those calves on the way down. Ooh, yeah, good burn. This right here to the right of me is a supper club, golf course. I don't know how much you saw that in the camera, but could have said something earlier, but I was working on my focus. I really wanted to feel every pedal on that uphill there. Oh, that was nice. the golf course right here to the right. It's a pretty cool course, but I would recommend uh, bug spray because the whole, that side of the course is all swamp way back in there. There's a dirt road that runs um, well, straight line from me to the dirt road, it's only about three miles, four miles most, but it winds around back there. And the reason why it winds around back there is because it's a lot of lowland swamp. It's nice to ride on, but a lot of people don't even drive it, so it's a lot of loose, sandy stuff. Hence why I have my Enduro tires on all the time. Is in order to get a good quiet ride away from traffic completely, you really gotta get out on those roads. Depending on the time of day. In the evenings, you know, five, six, seven, sometimes eight o'clock at night, you can get out on roads like this. It's a lot quieter, people are home. But there's also the people that are on them to go get stuff to eat and go out for the evening too, so. Right now it's Sunday afternoon, so I'm expecting a car every second. Well, the rain sure did green and all the greenery. It did green up all the greenery. <laughs> Looks a lot better now. We've had two days of a little bit of rain and what a difference. Still not enough. 
We need a lot more rain. More headwind up on this knoll. Woof. about the headwinds we've been out of it for so long trying to stay in higher gear here to keep that burn going Alright, it's 15 and a half miles. Whew. <sighs> my time, my riding time. <sighs> Good burning ride for a Sunday afternoon. Might actually be my warm up ride for another one later. Looks like it's gonna clear up a little bit longer. Ooh. <sighs> 